Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be checking out the QNAP TS464. And we're gonna be doing something a little bit different this time and install a graphic card on here and see if we can run it as a desktop. So let's get started. Now, as you may know, QNAP's been a long time sponsor of this channel, starting with the TS253D. Along the lines, I've reviewed this guy many times. I've reviewed the TS464 recently, and I am actually using my workhorse, which I also review, which is the TS473A. That one's been a solid workhorse for my home office right here. Includes two PCIe ports, which is allocated with the 10 gigabit ethernet, as well as a graphic card for transcoding and it runs Ryzen. So yeah, that thing's been working really well. Now, because I reviewed quite a bit of these, um, the operating system haven't changed much. Uh, the storage wise, as far as the three bay, two bay or four bay, that's the only thing that's really changed. So I'm gonna do something slightly different this time in reviewing this NAS, which is taking it apart, reviewing as I go, and then installing graphic card as well as installing a different operating system on here just to see how well it would run. Now I'm gonna cheat a little because the CPU that is on this, which is an Intel, N5105 is a pretty good CPU. I actually use this on my other mini PCs, which is my main remote PC right now with only eight gigs of RAM. And that thing's been working really well. So I know the CPU on here works very well. With the amount of hardware that we could shove into here, it's gonna run better than my mini PC. To start off, this is similar to the 253D that we just saw earlier on the channel, which is the two bay NAS. Uh, the build is exactly the same, but you have this translucent door, which is, uh, similar to what you would get over there with the four bay NAS instead of the two bay. This also has a quick release so you can release each one and it also has a quick connect. That's what I would call it or screwless uh, install for the hard drives. These would actually pop out and you can install the hard drive within here without any screws. I do like that feature because I don't like screwing in stuff but there are holes for 2.5 inch drives if you need to. So far, all models that I've tested on the QNAP does run a 2.5 gigabit ethernet in the back. This one has two, as well as two USB ports and a USB three uh, 10 gigabit port and a HDMI. So you can hook this up to a monitor or a TV and turn this into a little media station with the built-in software. Now in front of the case, you have your uh, quick copy and the quick copy button with the USB 3 in the front, as well as the LEDs to tell you which hard drive is running or which one's on and the power LED. And then the, obviously the power switch. That's about it for the shell of this. Now I'm gonna start taking this apart and talk about the internals of this. First thing you need to do is remove the front door. Uh, you don't have to remove the trays to get to it, but when you remove the trays, without having to take this whole thing apart, you actually still have access to all the RAM and the NVMe. So I like that I don't have to take this apart, just to upgrade parts. Now, there are three screws in the back. Um, you'll see them, it's here, here, and the bottom, I think, which I will be removing just to get the access to the inside. And screw on the bottom. So there's only three screws that's holding this whole bay together. You can slide it out and that's the case. That is actually very easy to remove. So it's easier to see the internals, but over here you could actually see the RAM as well as the NVMe storage drive. Now, one thing that I have on this is that it only has a PCIe 4X. So you can't fit a full 16X graphic card on here. And because there is this metal piece right here, it actually prevents you from actually trying to use a full 16 PCIe slot. It just doesn't want to go in. It sticks up and you can't get this all the way down. So unfortunately, I only have a 1X PCIe. I don't have a 4X PCIe, but this should be just fine to power up a graphic card and run it. And the graphic card we're gonna be using is a 750 Ti. I love this graphic card. I explained it so many times because this is a decent graphic card. It doesn't need a six pin power. Now installing the RAM is pretty easy. All you have to do is just unclip the RAM, pops right out. And I am gonna be slapping in 16 gigs of RAM and maxing it out because you know, why not? In here, which you could see, has the RAM. All I have to do is just pop that in. And then the other 16 gigs of RAM, slide it into that slot, pop that in, and there we have 16 gigs of RAM. So the NVMe is right over here, as well as number two right over here. So there are two slots for the NVMe. 
which is pretty good if you're planning to expand this for NVMe cache. I'm only gonna use this for an operating system basis, so I'm gonna stick in the NVMe. And there we go. We have the NVMe, we have the 16 gigs of RAM, and now time for the graphic card. So my plan is to remove this back plane. Ooh, that wasn't that good. All right, so it's the next day. I finally gave up on trying to remove that screw. No matter what I tried to do, I just couldn't un, you know, break it free. So I think I'm gonna need a vice grip on the other side to kind of break it, but I'm not gonna do that right now. For now, I am just gonna leave this on top of the case where there's a little gap and yeah, this case is not gonna be fully assembled for now. Just to see if I can get something installed using this graphic card. So um, I'm ready to plug it in. I'm gonna be putting it into my um, View Pro, which is this screen thing right over here and hooking it up to a monitor just so I could get some sort of graphics. But I do have an operating system of choice. I think I'm gonna install Ubuntu on here just to get Linux installed, but I don't have to worry about the original uh, operating system that's on here because it's got dual boot protection, which means um, the original firmware, which is the QTOS, is actually on a flash card on the server or on the NAS itself. So if you wipe it out, just don't wipe out that flash and you should be able to install any operating system and dual boot from that. And if you don't want to use it anymore, you could just boot it back into the normal flash and you should have your operating system again. So with everything all set, package includes their power brick as well as a US version of the three pin uh, power adapter. It does have some screws as well as um, is it bumpers. Nope, they're just all screws for hard drives if you are plan not planning to use their quick release. Instruction manual as well as uh, ethernet cable. So we're just gonna use the power brick. I already have everything hooked up to the 750 as well as my USBs. So let's see where if this will boot up into the graphic card or will it boot up to the onboard? My suspicions is that it's gonna boot up into the onboard until I change the BIOS to disable it. That's my thought. So we'll see what happens then. But shouldn't be a problem because I have direct access to it. Okay, here we go. Powered on. There is power now. It's got the fan going and there is no signal going to the graphic card yet. Maybe I do have to go into the BIOS. So. I'm gonna power this off. The fan is so quiet. I'm sitting right next to it. I got a really good flow, but I'm not getting, I don't hear anything from it. All right, let me plug this into the server itself. Power back up. All right, now there's power, still no signal, nothing. Am I hooked up to the right positions? I think I am, I haven't changed anything. Okay, you know what? Let me power it off, take this out of play. The only thing I can think of is because I upgraded to 16 gigs of RAM and it's not supported, but I don't think that's the problem. Let's uh, power this back on. I gotta plug it back in. There you go. HDMI is hooked up. Oh, it's powering up. I hear the beep. Still no signal. Oh, you know what? It just turned on. My only suspicion is it, it will not allow you to put a graphic card on here because the amount of draw I have on that graphic card, it's causing the issue. I'm just gonna unpower this. Try with a graphic card, a 1030, that requires like almost next to no power. Put this in and we'll see if that powers up. Okay, that powers up with the 1030 in there. So the 750 is probably drawing a little bit too much wattage through the PCIe port where it's not allowing it to boot up. Okay, so now I'm gonna move the HDMI cable over to the 1030 and we'll see if this powers on. I have a suspicion that it won't, but we'll see. I know now past post, which is that beep that you hear. So let's see if that will work. Okay, the beep is there, still no signal, which give it about like 10 seconds, it should pop up with something. There you go. Graphics just popped up using the 1030. Okay, so graphic cards does work on this thing. Uh, I do have the BIOS screen up right now and you can see I got 16 gigs of RAM. It is reading that correctly, uh, DDR4. CPU configurations is the N5105, two gigahertz turbo, boost to 2.9. It does actually, and well, it, we already know that it supports VMX, so I could do uh, VMs. Chipset, BIOS beep, security, boot. Okay, so there is no option to set if it, this will be primary because normally you could say like, hey, disable the internal GPU. Let's see if I could boot from my UEFI disk. 
right there. It does, it picks it up pretty good. And I could probably install the desktop that I want, which I'm gonna jump right into it. Here we go, uh, Ubuntu is finally installed. Um, honestly, I have the 1030 hooked up and it is working. So um, let me see if I can get rid of this screen here, finish that off. It does detect the onboard flash or the SSD, which they call it, which is the original uh, QTS uh, volume. I'm gonna leave that alone because you can always hide it, but I'm just gonna let that go. But just to show you guys, if I do a LSPCI, um, LSPCI, how come it's not working? Oh, I typed it wrong. Uh, it is running the GT1030. Now, honestly, the GT1030 is not much better than the onboard 600 UMH right here, or UM, UMHD or UHD in on the Intel board. So I'm not really gonna test any games or anything because you are not getting much more of a performance boost. Um, if anything, the onboard might be slightly faster than the 1030 because the 1030 is really a good workhorse, but not anything for gaming. It's terrible for gaming. But yes, you can still watch YouTube, use this as a desktop. I'm not gonna show you too much of a demo because I'm not gonna go through benchmarks or anything. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys that it is possible. So I am able to get audio working as well. Let me see if I could uh, pop into maybe an install part of this. All right, so it does work. I could full screen this. Let me lower this a little bit because you probably don't want to hear it. I could go into stats for nerds right here. It does have quite a few drop frames from this. So I think you're gonna get a lot better performance using the onboard graphic card instead of using um, 1030 on this, to be honest. But yeah, it everything does run. You can install Windows on this as well. I just didn't choose to install Windows because Linux is just a much quicker install to get it on this guy. But you can install different operating systems like FreeNAS, Windows, Linux, as you can see. So not a bad option to play around with this and yes the graphic card does work uh, if i had a maybe a 1050 uh, not the ti version or a 750 not the ti version i might be able to power it and get some games going but with the 1030 uh, absolutely not uh, as well as the onboard i might be able to get some older older games to play but yeah that's not what it's about mainly just to see if it will run with a graphic card just like a pc would and yes it does so in conclusion the only downside is that it doesn't supply enough power to power a 750 which is max peak on that 30 watt area so you will need a self-powered uh, type of device to power this but I, I really wanted this to have its own power instead of running an external power supply to power a graphic card. So using a 1030 on this, which is enough power, isn't necessarily a gaming device. Can you turn this into a desktop? The answer is yes. You can actually convert this into a desktop if you wanted to, because underneath all the hardware, it is still a PC. Anyway, that is it for me. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next next video is going to be out and I say my nerd cave hack till it hurts